All right, guys, what is up? Today we have a, another diecast review, and this is of Scott McLaughlin's 2020 um, Shell V Power Nitro Plus um, IndyCar and 1 to 18 scale by Greenlight Collectibles. Um, so, this one's a little bit interesting because this is a 2021 release. It comes in a 2020 style box, which is a little bit strange. Um, and the box is even branded as 2021. Um, and this car here has only ran twice, once in racing and once in practice or testing um, by Scott. Now, this car here was, would have been more based off of the St. Petersburg again. And I do, and I'll actually dive into the point I was just about to make in a second. Um, so this is based off of the St. Petersburg car, or at least the rendering for it. But it could go either way. And it would be the only time that um, that he has ran this scheme because he has not ran it since. So this was, in race conditions, a one-off. Um, and again, weird, 2021 release, but 2020 box, 2020 car, all that fun stuff. So there are going to be a couple versions of this particular car. Um, there's gonna be a road course edition of this one. Um, now I don't know if it's going to be released here in the States or not. I, I, it may be an Australian exclusive. I'm not hundred percent sure. And there's also reportedly going to be a figure edition of this car, which I'm 95% sure that one's going to be an Australian, um, Australian release as well. Now this car here, the road course edition was the one that where we got our first pictures of a road course car. So there's an Australian diecast company a retailer that released a photo of this scheme on a road course arrow kit and it looked a lot like green light so it didn't look like you know something they had a custom builder do or whatever and there was a limited edition or whatever it looked like a proper green light mass produced car um and for whatever reason we also got this one in oval configuration and they don't even like attempt to say hey it's a 2021 they haven't done that, which is strange. Now, I am glad we got this car because I am a huge fan of this scheme. I love this scheme. Ever since it debuted with New Garden in 2019 at the Indy 500, I've been a fan of this scheme and I've been wanting it in diecast form. And I don't care who we get it for. I'd actually prefer McLaughlin because I actually like him and not so much New Garden. No offense, but not much of a New Garden fan. But anyways, so let's take a look at this car. And it's definitely a strange one. So, my first complaint, my first gripe, since I've been doing that more recently with Greenlight, is the nose, the decals are way too small on it. Now, the three is okay, actually, but the shell logo is too small. This one's fine. This one needs to be down more, and the pencil needs to be, like, up just a tiny bit more. So, complaint for that part is over. It just looks, the decals look way too small for the front nose. Especially the shell. The shell really throws it off. Um, Pyre, or Pyretech, uh, which was the sponsor of Matthew Brabham's very short IndyCar venture. Um, on the side, Hitachi, um, as per expected, because Team Penske, um, Siemens, Mosaic, and Firestone. Nothing on top of the side pods. Um, Shell V-Power Nitro Plus on the side, um, which, fun fact, this is not the first time that we've seen these colors. Helio ran them in 2015, but that was on the Chevy Arrow kit, so it was different. But these colors did still race before. Um, anyways, Verizon, which gives you another indi indicator this is a 2020 car because Verizon is not on the engine covers anymore for um, Team Penske. It is now Car Shop, but that's not on the diecast either, but it's just kind of blank here. Penske truck rental on the thin, the number three, which is a little bit crooked on the mine. Um, and then this one here, there's a gap, and this is one thing I've been complaining about that's happening more and more with these green light ones. There's a gap right here in this uh, joint between the nose section and the side pod part of the uh, chassis, so it's weird. Um, PPG and Snap-on, Chevrolet, uh, Pyrotech, P1, NTT Pull Award. Um, back here, the number three. Now, interesting note. In the test session that this car ran in with Scott McLaughlin, it did not have the number three on the rear wing. 
So this leads me to believe more that this was based off of the uh, St. Petersburg edition. Not much, not trying to be a certain friend of mine and like make conspiracy theories or anything like that. Just saying stuff I noticed. Show V-Powered Nitro Plus on the rear wing. Team Penske here on the uh, crash box. This side is pretty much the same. It looks good though. You have to admit this car looks really good. If they just fixed the nose, I would be completely fine with it. Um, the number three is actually the right, in the right position here. Chrome suspension, because that was not on the Team Penske cars for the first two years of the R18 era, um, for whatever reason, but it just looks better with the chrome suspension. Um, so yeah, that's like the interesting little quirks and features of this car. It's a really nice car. I love the livery on it. Obviously we know, you know, green light, IR18s by now, it's no feature. Also, the aero screen does kind of bulge out here. Um, now, I am going to forgive a little bit of the quirks because when you look underneath this car and see the DIN number, it's number two, which is kind of funny. So I'm willing to forgive because this is the second one produced, but the quality control green light, and this is actually the second one I, I uh, looked at because um, the first one actually had like a like a super glue mark and you can make out a fingerprint like right here where the NTT is it's like no I don't want someone else's fingerprint super glued onto the arrow screen I'm not doing that and it's just the quality control issues from green light are terrible I've turned away cars like I've been interested in buying them and I've turned them away because of this gap here because it just looks bad now this one again forgivable and it doesn't, it's not as bad on this one. It's really not as bad after I really got to looking at it, but it's still there and it shouldn't be. Last year's cars were not really affected by this issue. This year's are. So, uh, uh, um, but anyways, we got our first Scott McLaughlin car and it's actually kind of cool because we've had two number three cars from last year um with different drivers in them so that's kind of neat um but i'm curious to see kind of when the road course car pops up wherever um would definitely definitely would get it because it would be a great direct comparison of what has changed what hasn't with these cars by the way they did not include the louvers that's for you ron i know there's no louvers on the rear wing on the road course car Thanks for the heads up, Ron. Your 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 input is very much appreciated. Anyways, um, but it'd be great to do a side by side comparison of pretty much the same exact car just on two different arrow kits. Um, so, anyways, that's really about it for this car. Said and done. I I mean it's a good car, but I do caution you. Two things actually, I caution you with. Check this right here to make sure there's not a gap there because. That means something structurally is not right with it. And again, it's just been one of those things that keeps reoccurring with green light. And number two, I want to address something real fast that I've been asked. So these cars, the 2021s, if you're local to Indianapolis or you plan on stopping visiting the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, you will not be able to get these at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Museum gift shop. You will not be able to. They are currently online only. They did not order any for the museum itself. So don't waste your time going there looking for them. They're not going to be there. So that's my fair heads up because I live a mile away from the track and I get to go there relatively regularly and I get to um, say, hey, what's up? When's this coming in? Blah, blah, blah. These are not going to be there. None of the 2021s are. So just a fair heads up. And that's it for this review, guys. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, definitely subscribe, share it with your friends, anybody who's interested in IndyCar diecast um, or on the edge about this car because I would recommend getting it. Just be careful of the things I said and you should be good. So it, by the way, recommended de retailer, by the way, uh, Gutswear on eBay or at any track. Check out Gutswear because they have all of them. I know the owner. He is a stand-up guy. He is amazing at what he does. He always delivers on time. He is awesome. So check out Gutswear for all of these. It's where I got this one. It's where I got the Dixon car. It's where I got the Rossi car that I'm going to be reviewing next. It's where I'm going to be getting all my diecasts this year.
So check him out. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace out.